Say it louder for the people in the back. Hey y'all, hey, it is me, it is your girl Nurse T. And if you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. And if you been riding with me for a while welcome back and thank you for subscribing um for those of who for those of you who know me already um then you already know but if you don't know me i am a registered nurse um i make videos um well i started my channel making videos about nursing and just giving y'all an overall look into the nursing industry nursing um just from a nurse perspective of the way we do things but anyways somewhere along the line my, my my channel has turned to like just basically a vlogging channel for day-to-day -day life i switched the name now it's all things nurse t because literally on this channel um i started off with a niche but let me put my shades on y'all because i am driving i started off with a niche but i'm kind of like just just sharing you sharing with you day to day you're going to get a little bit of everything from nurse t <clears throat> everything through my journey of life um <clears throat> the aspect of nursing you get it all you know you click on what you like you bypass what you don't and it is what it is i'm not gonna form all these different channels to target different things if you see by the thumbnail that it's something you don't want to see then just keep it going um you might miss something or whatever but um for the most part i wanted to share in this video i wanted to just talk about some things that i find that are very 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 relevant in life um there was some things that i've grown to understand that i've learned over time and some things that i i wouldn't have never known that i would become so accustomed to being a certain way but through life and life experiences you know people we're, we're constantly changing and evolving and hopefully we're doing these things for the best to better ourselves right um because i'm not the same person who i was when i was 20 i'm not the same person who i was when i was in my 30s now that i'm in my 40s i am just trying to embrace life and take life experiences and not to repeat any bad experiences but just to be me and give the best version of me so with that being said, I had a friend who who sent me um, who sent me a text, and on this text, it was like a list of things that I felt like, man, that that hit right on. Like that is so important. Like yes, yes, yes. Like like okay, so I'm gonna talk about it because if you haven't um, thought about any of these things, I just want to share them with you. So some of this I'll just read. Some of this I might elaborate more on it. But I just wanted to share with you something that I felt like, like, oh yeah, I just, I felt a lot of these things. And in no particular order, let's go. And if I say anything or read anything and you want to shine light on anything, feel free to keep that um, comment section popping and let's talk about some of this stuff. I'm, I'm like, I love discussion. I love to hear other people's opinion and I'm open to it. So one thing is the first one is say stay stop stay silent. Not everything needs to be said. I have learned that y'all. And at my big age now, like every action doesn't deserve a reaction. Some people who um, actually sometimes it make me feel like the better person when I know people are doing things to me or have said things about me and I choose not to entertain it. Hey, that's called growth. That is growth because at times, you know, we're all good for popping off or we're all good for making our voice heard or saying what we have to say or getting what we have to say off our chest. But sometimes it's not even about that. Sometimes you just have to um, realize that God has allowed you to see the things that were said behind your back or, you know, so that he protect you so that you're not putting yourself in that same predicament or whatever you know so some things that you might hear it doesn't always call for a 
a clap back. You know, sometimes you stay silent. And what they said, the best revenge is your paper, is your success. So just stay prayed up, handle your business, do what you got to do. And the ones that's talking a lot, saying stuff, who's praying on your downfall, at the end of the day, they're going to always be at the bottom. Um, let's see. The, the second one on this list, it says, silence is better than unnecessary drama. I feel like that goes hand in hand with what we just talked about. Some, I don't... I, at a certain age, you might be about that life and, and want to do all that stuff. But at a certain age, when you got things under your belt, you got stuff to lose, you ain't about that drama. And it ain't even worth it because drama to me, that's for the people who don't have nothing going on with themselves. I'm not really about the drama. And I even stated that in, this, in one of these vlogs. I don't do the drama on my page. And I don't, I don't really entertain that kind of stuff. I don't want to build an audience based on drama because I'm not a drama person. Now, sometimes I can be a little dramatic, but I don't, I'm not doing the drama. Like I'm, I'm looking for peace, serenity, just cool, calm, collective vibes. All right, and next one says, if you find someone smarter than you, work with them, don't compete. Competition is a weakness. Ring, ring, ring. Let's ring the bells, y'all, baby. They hit it on the bullseye. There is so much success in this world that we all can be successful. There's room for everybody to be successful. You just have to have your passion and your discipline. And when they both meet, you can get out there and be whoever it is you want to be. I am here to tell you, you can be with whoever or whatever it is you want to be. It People with that song say, started from the bottom, now I'm here. Started from the bottom, now. I mean... Just because you where you came from, your your background, your history, your childhood upbringing, that doesn't define who you are today. A lot of us take that and, and they look at that like, oh, uh, that happened to me. No, it happened for you. It happened for you to deliver you from that in your adulthood. Because when you see certain things that have happened and transpired in your life, I don't think you would sit back and and, 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 and and wish for that stuff to happen in your adulthood. So if you grew up poor, if you grew up uh, wearing hand-me-downs, if you grew up doing this, doing that, like it didn't happen to you, it happened for you. Some of these situations that um, people go through when um, they grow up with violent households, they grow up with, um, with, with parents who tried their best, but their best wasn't enough, and they had to suffer. They had to, like, you know, they had to live a certain lifestyle in order to feel like they're living normal. And that's okay. Again, it didn't happen to you. It happened for you. Because it put you in a position, mind-wise, to where you know to go out there and be great. Right? Um, I've had a lot of closeness around me that really shaped my mind to thinking, like, number one, I've, I've seen those who go out there and have a lot of children I love a big family I love a lot of children but I knew that just because my body could produce them that doesn't mean to go out there and just keep having them because I never wanted to have a child that have to grow up and raise the next one and raise the next one when you're one years old you out on your own like no like these kids did not ask to be here and sometimes I find myself just with the three kids in my busy career of working in the hospital 12 hours I feel like to give my kids what I want to give them, I got to go out there and work for it. That's if I'm thinking money-wise. When all in return, in return, these kids just really want your time. You know, my, my daughter once told me, I would rather I would rather the family sleep under the bridge just to have my parents. Like, just to have us present in the home. Because every time she looked up, mom was gone, dad was gone. Always working, 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 working just to... To, to treat them on a nice trip but once that trip over you back working 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 like some of these kids sometimes all they want is your attention your time but of course reality is you got to get out there you got to make money you got to pay bills you got to uh, put food on the table you got to do all this and that but again when you know better you do better i love my i love my job i love the fact that i once prayed to be where i'm at today 
but I see what it has done to me and for me, for me in a good way. But to me, I just feel like, I, you know, I get to the point I'm tired. I get to the point where I feel like I'm gone the bulk of the day. And when my kids see me, they get the sloppy leftovers. Like I want to be able to make the income that I need to make to enjoy a great life, but not at the expense of not being there for my kids. You know, and there are positions out there where you can have the best of both worlds. And once you realize that, your, your mind frame hits a little different. Like, I ain't trying to say I want to be home and, and spend all this time with them, but I'm not generating any income, no money. And then we're poor. Like, I don't want, I'm not thinking of that. But what I'm thinking of is, you know, think smart, not hard. Like, get out there, do what you have to do to take care of your kids be able to send them on these go on these trips and enjoy nice trips with them frequently but still be able to you know carry yourself in a manner to where you're conducting your business and um just, just having the best of both worlds if, if, you know but anyways back to, again i gotta refresh my memory on what the question was yeah so I don't know how look I don't know how we get on that all of that from this question about um, competition is the weakness yeah no so like yeah so my thing is when you surround yourself with like-minded people honestly I don't think there is no competition I think like-minded people success begins success when you're around like-minded people people who are going places doing things they're gonna want to be surrounded by people that's going places doing things don't put don't make me the person that's um, doing the best out of my group. I don't want to be that person because that's the group I don't want to be a part of. I like to be a part of the group. We're teaching each other, you know. We all seeking greatness. Like, I like being around people who inspire me in many ways. Like, it, it, if it's like how you, you know, like inspire me, like how you keeping your home together, inspire me, like how you keeping your marriage together, inspire me, like how you, you know, you keeping the kids together, inspire me, like just to inspire me. I like people that I can learn from, you know, and again, like they always tell you, you look around and if you're the, you the smartest person in the room, you need to get up out that room because I like feeding off. I ain't going to even lie to you. I'm not going to even lie to you. That helped me to grow and become a nurse. You know, when I first, uh, I, before going into the hospital, I worked in a dialysis facility. And there was no future in that front because I worked so many long hours to where basically it didn't allow me to go back to school. Well, I feel at that time, the, the time, for, the hours were so long that, you know, you, basically to go to school, you needed flexibility. And that job wasn't provided, and I don't even think they even cared. It was a private-owned dialysis facility. And I don't think they even cared about the success and growth. They wouldn't encourage you to go back to school, none of that stuff. So I left, and I went to work at the hospital. And when I worked at the hospital, I seen girls that looked like me. Girls who had decisions to make. Like, if they had any, like, I, I told you, and I might have shared this once before in a previous video. At that age and at that time, you know, and the money that I was making, I had to make a choice between, do I pay the light bill or the phone bill? These people, they had issues where they had to find out or wonder, am I going to get the Mercedes or am I going to get the BMW? I'm like, I want those problems. You can have these problems. I want those problems. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, those were women who went after. Like, these wasn't grown, grown women like old women. These were like young 20-year-old women who were buying homes, who were buying luxury vehicles, who was buying very nice handbags, who basically took care of themselves. And they allowed me to be in their presence. And I felt like that was a gift from God because that showed me what that is, is, is possible. Like, you don't have to look a certain way to get these type of things. But where I came from, we was all accustomed to being a certain type of employee you know we were taught to be these type of people in these roles but when I moved on and I wanted more and I went and worked somewhere else and the type of people that were there in that setting and that surrounding 
it opened my eyes and showed me and I'm like well what's the difference between this person and me you know I often compare backgrounds I'm like, I'm like you know that it was it was a gift from God to be put to where I was it was a couple of young ones a lot of them they came out of Prairie View A&M University and I was working with them and like I said they really changed the narrative for me and, and in one in particular one in particular like I said, I, I often looked and I and I was like, when I had to compare, like, like, what did she do different than what I did different? You know, like, okay, she have both parents. I don't have any parents. Um, she don't have no kids. I have kids. Um, her way might have been harder. I mean, easier than mine. My way is definitely gonna be me getting it out the mud. Um, but when I looked at that. I still saw this black woman, this black young girl, black young lady who were doing things that I never thought could be done at such a young age, such a young age. I don't even think she was 23, 24 and had all this going on. Very successful, very beautiful. I used to go get my hair done at the beauty shop, but I might have to get mine done once a month. She was going every week. Very pretty girl. I will call you out, but I don't know if you want your name displayed like that. If you're watching my video and you already know your initials are L.A. L.A. And I think you know who you are if you're watching my video. But I just want to say, put yourself in that surrounding. You are, sometimes we're not inspired by the people we see in our family. Sometimes it's the outside people that inspire us because sometimes we might not have that person in our family i was the first nurse in my family most of us have been accustomed to become be nurse aides i was the first nurse i actually i didn't realize that myself when i actually did it i just knew i wanted to do something but when i actually became one when i used to work with the nurses and i would see this type of stuff that put fear in my heart and i'm like oh i gotta take a tube i know oh i gotta do this i gotta give them medicine but what if i kill them what if I what if I do something wrong? What if I what a, fear? Fear. Some people are there to project fear on you. Don't project fear on your own self. So but anyways, y'all, so be with like-minded people. Be with people, surround yourself with people that are going in the direction you're going. Because I guarantee you, if you're surrounding yourself with people who are on your level or higher, they it, if you won't come off as hating or competition. If you still come off to them as being a hater or a com competitive, then you just move yourself around because then you don't even need to be in that circle. I feel like I got all off topic with that one. But um, I didn't realize my explanations were going to be so long, y'all. Um, so it's about 12 of them on here. I think I've covered three. So let's cover one more. Let's cover um, let's cover one more. And if y'all like the video, like it, leave me a comment and let me know to do another portion, a, a part two, and I'll do a part two. Cause if y'all ain't feeling it and y'all ain't even listening and watching the video, then ain't no point in me even doing it. Or I'm, you know what? Forget that. That ain't the right mind frame to have. I might still do it for the people who just choose not to like the video but still watching the person who choose to um want to see the part two but just don't want to see it in the comments but i'll still do it because again i don't want to live i don't want to have like a limited mind 2024 no limited mind y'all let's 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 think positive i'm already project that people gonna watch this and they're gonna understand what i'm saying and they're gonna let me know down below nurse t i, I feel you but let's go on because there's some deep ones in here and then there's some that's like yeah yeah there's some deep ones so the, the next one is say the family you create is more important than the family you come from the family you create is more important than the family you come from i'm gonna tell you this a lot of people a lot of people didn't grow up having the best in their in their words or whatever they didn't grow up having the best i'm just gonna pull over y'all but they didn't they didn't grow up having the best to their knowledge or their definition of having the best 
They might have didn't grow up having the best. However, again, where you came from doesn't project where you're going. Where you came from doesn't project where you're going. Most of the time, it's the people who came from the very bottom who see no other way but up. Because once you've been at the bottom, the only thing you know from now, from this point, is, is, is to be up. When you came from abusive parents, when you came from um, being neglected, when you came from um, just having things to not go the way you would have wanted it to go, chances are you're going to project. You could either take it left or you could take it right. You could either take it left and say, well, I ain't good to my kids because I didn't have a father figure. I ain't good to my kids because I ain't or I ain't good to my kids because uh, cause I you know I didn't have a mother or whatever whatever but or you can look at it on the other end on the positive end where because I had this father I'm gonna be this way because I had this mother I'm gonna be this way you know what I'm saying like I don't want my kids to go through what I went through so I'm gonna be a different version the kind of version that I wanted or that I needed when growing up and I lost my thought, y'all, because this little clip had shut off on me and I had to, um, but yeah. So anyways, what, what, what? Yeah. So create the family that, that you would have wanted growing up. The family you create is more important than the family you come from. Yeah. So create the family because some, it don't even have to be directly in the home. It can just be the outside. Like you have family members that. You know, just don't get along. Just don't get along. Like they messy, they 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 spiteful. They see like they 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 out to envy and pre see the you know like just hope you have the works. Like don't be that person. Like just if you gotta stay within your own little family, and sometimes you your family might be based on friends. Sometimes blood can't make you no closer. Like some family members. I mean, some people grow up and create a family because some of their biological family are toxic so because y'all family by blood doesn't mean you have to deal with um toxic behavior from people so again the family that you are that you create is more important than the family you come from all right i feel like i chopped that one all up but Let's do one more. Your current... Oh, yeah. Let's do this one. Let's do this one. And then we out. Let's do this one and we out. And then come back for some more in the next one. Okay? Let's do that. Okay. So, my last one, y'all. Your current job doesn't care about you. They only pay you enough to kill your dreams. Say it louder for the people in the back. Let's say it one more time, y'all. Your current job doesn't care about you. They only pay you enough to kill your dreams. Because honestly, we all have bills. We all have responsibility. We all have this thing called life, right? In life, um... We all have, well, for the most part, we all have dreams of doing something. Whether that's to become a certain person, whether that's to do a certain thing in life, whether that's to have this certain life you envision, that you imagine. That's what you imagine, that's your dream. But you got to put it together. You got to put it into works. Put it into work. Oftentimes, that dream simply and that and that goal that we have simply just becomes a wish because it dies right there. It dies right there, right here in our head. We never bring it out. We never do what it takes to make it a reality. The more we keep going to work, the more we just push, push it down below. But keep in mind. 
you're fulfilling that person's dream. Whoever you're working for, whoever you um, giving all this sweat equity to, like this hard work and coming to work on time, um, doing the best at what you do, doing this and that, all of this, you're 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 creating, you're helping to create this other person's dream. They living in a dream, like they 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 have they accomplished their dream, but what's yours? But we do at times we just we feel that because we have bills, because we have responsibilities, these are things that get in our way, and we often and when I say we, I'm talking about myself. We often allow ourselves to get comfortable and complacent to where we work on our dream a little bit here. A little bit here, a little bit here. Oh, but when, when, when we go work for somebody else, we coming with the big dogs. Like, we stepping like the big dogs. Like, we coming in on time. We st we working 12, 16, 18 hours. Like, we doing whatever we got to do to get a fraction of what they just made. I ain't saying that having a dream to own a business or whatever is for everybody. Because somebody has to be the, the waiter at the restaurant. Somebody has to um, be the one that does X, Y, and Z. But if you have a dream to do something, what they say, don't go work for somebody eight hours and then come home and sleep on your dream. Go work for somebody 12 hours and come back and put 30 minutes into yours. No, it don't happen that way. I follow one person. If you watching me, Girl, you know I always tell you how much you motivate me. But motivation only goes so far. Discipline is where... When motivation and discipline come together... When motivation and discipline come together... Those are two powerful tools. You can do some big things. You can do some big things. And one of them is accomplishing your dreams. Accomplishing your goals. Accomplishing whatever it is that you imagine yourself to do or that you manifested in your life. Again, I follow someone that I know personally. And if you're watching this, hey girl, hey. But if you're watching this, like she posts, she's living in her dream right now. She's doing her thing. She's doing her big one. And I'm proud of her for that. But it didn't always come like that. It came from hard work. She, you still got to get out there and work. And when I go to work, I do I do my best I, because I'm there. So I'm going to put my all. I'm not going to give you my sloppy leftovers. I'm going I'm to I'm give you 100%, maybe 110% because that's where I'm at, right? But when you finish with that, go home and work on you. She go home and work on her. You put 12 hours here in them, she put 8 hours here in her. And at some point, you just got to step out and, and do your big one. Again, the beauty about falling, you can always get up. It's when you fall and you stay there, then that's when it becomes a problem. Because I'm not saying that every entrepreneur not going to have their winter. Every entrepreneur, might they, they experience a the winter. They experience when times are slow. They experience when times get hard. They experience when times are rough. But it's what you do about that. If you, if you get knocked down, you get up. Anyways, y'all, I can elaborate on that a little bit more. But um, for the sake of time and some things I need to get done, I'm going to go ahead and end it here. If you're watching this video and you, you like the video and if you watched it all the way to the very end, go ahead and give me a pink heart. I appreciate that. I appreciate that, y'all. But if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to your girl, Nurse T. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thank you for watching.